Hey everybody, welcome back to episode number 40 already of the army themed Zenith Super Duty build. Now I wanna explain what I mean by going down the rabbit hole of airplane building. So you guys need to know that I don't show you absolutely every single step or every single thing that I do on this airplane. And I don't explain on video every single thing I'm thinking about. Because if I did, it'd be boring and it would take way too long and I just can't do that. All right, now one of the things I did not talk about in the previous video, because it just wasn't important at the time, is that I've been thinking about making my airplane flyable from the left seat and the right seat. Back when I was in college, I got my CFI certificate and I got my double I certificate and my MEI certificate, but I haven't used them in a lot of years. But what I'm thinking about doing, or what I've thought about doing, is eventually making this airplane so I could fly it from the left seat or the right seat, so that I could offer a transition training course for people who are building the Zenith airplanes. Most of the time, the insurance companies will require you to have five hours of instruction in a Zenith 750 before they will insure you to fly your airplane. That transition training is kind of hard to come by, and I figured it'd be something cool that I could do in here. But to do that, like I said, I'd want to be able to have controls on the left side and the right side. Now, if we look at this panel design, my thinking was that if I do at some point want to, to uh, offer that transition training course, I'd want to have a throttle over here. And I figured if I ever do that, I could just get a new corner piece here made, rearrange these a little bit, and add a throttle. It wouldn't be that expensive to do to have another uh, little panel made. But since I am no longer using a three-piece panel, and I'm going to have a one-piece panel made, well, if I don't add that throttle now, and I want to add it later, then I'm going to have to have a whole new panel made, which is a big job to change everything out, and that can get expensive. It's no longer just changing out this little corner piece. So, with the new one-piece panel designed, I have added a throttle to the right side. And we have, from Aircraft Specialty, a new finalized panel template that is all one piece. You'll notice over here on the left, I have the throttle, the elevator, no, the flap switch, the elevator trim, and the trim indicator over here. So this has been redesigned a little bit. And over on this side, we've redesigned this a little bit to add a throttle over here. So now I'm just gonna go right from the start with dual throttles. Some of you guys were asking why I put the mixture control in the middle of the airplane instead of over here with the throttle. So to answer your question, I wanted, to, I wanted this corner set up the same way as my cruiser because I really like having the throttle here and being able with my thumb to hit the, the flap switch and my finger here to hit the trim switch. Yes, I know I could put all those functions on the stick grip, but this is how I wanted it. So with this here, the only other place to put the mixture was over here. But I wanted the mixture over here in the middle, again, because even though I didn't explain it before, my thought process was later on, if I want to fly this airplane from the right seat, I'd have a throttle here and I'd still be able to get to the mixture here. So now if you look at this panel, if you're in the left seat, you've got your throttle here and your mixture here. And if you're in the right seat, you've got your throttle here and your mixture here. And of course, you guys know with the Zenith, it has a center Y stick. So the control stick is in the center. So now my panel will be set up to be able to fly the airplane from either seat. Now, if I'm going to fly this airplane from the right seat, I'm going to want brakes on the right side. Now, again, this is something I thought that, you know, I can add later years from now or a couple years from now, if I do want to fly this from the right seat and provide instruction. But now that I'm already making the panel set up with dual throttles, well, this would probably be the easiest time to add brake pedals to the right side. Now, if I add brake pedals to the right side of the airplane, then I'm going to need some actuator mounts. All right, so I ordered from Zenith two more sets of these brackets here because they will mount these. Now, if I'm gonna have brakes on the right, I'm going to need to be able to press the brakes. So I've bought two MC, let's see, these are MC4s. These are MC5s here where they can see it has the hydraulic reservoir on it. 
Uh, these come with the Zenith kit, and there's actually two of them. I just have one here. So I had to get two of these for the right side. And Mako does have a nice plumbing diagram that shows you how these all connect together. And of course, to have the pedals on the right, I'm going to need two more hinges and of course, two more pedals. <laughs> so this is kind of how I've gone down the rabbit hole. So just adding this hole for the throttle on the panel got me going down the rabbit hole. Like, well, I might as well start adding the brakes to the right side now too. So I had to buy all these additional parts but I guess the good news is I might as well just build this airplane from the start with the dual pedals and dual throttles and have it all set up and ready to go now because it's a lot easier to do now than to try to modify it after it's already built. All right, I have the first set of brackets installed or just clear coat, I should say. I have to prime and paint them. And those were kind of easy because Zenith already had the holes drilled in the fuselage. But over here, there's no pre-drilled holes, so I do need to install the rudder pedals and find the correct position for these brackets. All right, I was wrong. Actually, they do have holes drilled or pre-drilled for both of these brackets. You can see these four holes here, I had to drill out the rivets, but that is where the brackets go. So those two are done. I can take them off, prime them, paint them, and rivet them in place. Well, the next goal is to get this airplane on the gear, and these are the rubber gear mounts. So I took a half inch diameter washer, which is the same diameter as kind of the, the bolts that hold this on. So I just traced a half moon shaped um, crescent on the rubber part. And I found the easiest way to cut this out is on the bandsaw. So I used the bandsaw to get a, a real close rough cut. And then you'll see in just a second here, I'll use a Dremel to clean it up. Here's what they look like in the brackets, all ready to go. All right, I have everything set and ready to go for the gear. And what I'm really hoping is that, well, you can see here that the gear comes from the factory with these notches cut out. And I'm hoping that they are cut out far enough that they fit in the, uh, the brackets. If not, then I'll have to take it off and grind these out. So I'm hoping they're done to the right size, but I won't know until I put it up to the fuselage and give it a try. All right, you morons, the camera's on. Do we walk back this now? No, Brian goes around the table. <laughs> this is like directing kindergartners. Jeez. You don't have to pay well, I did want to get some good high quality help to help me put the gear on. But I had to settle for Brian and Gordon. So they came over and as you can see here, we couldn't get the gear between the workbench and the gear brackets. So we moved the fuselage back so that the brackets would be between the two workbenches. And you can see here that opens up a space to where we can slide the gear back. As we were putting it in, remember those notches I showed in the gear? Well, they're drilled a little bit out of place, so the gear will not fit in the brackets. All right, guys, if, let me show you what's going on with the gear. So this is the gear looking at it from the top. So we'd have, it'd be more like, uh, like that, right? You're looking at the gear from the top. Here's those two notches. And this, these round circles are those kind of the bolts that come down from the gear bracket. If we put one of them in here like that, it fits perfect. On the other one, it's drilled about a half a diameter too far out. Now, the only way to fix this would be to grind this over like this and down. But now, instead of just a nice tight fit like that, we, it's going to fit more uh, like this. 
And of course, that's exaggerated a little bit, but you get the idea. I'm not sure if that's good or not, because having this fit tight in here is what keeps that gear from moving left and right. And I suppose just having one side would lock that in position and maybe this wouldn't matter. But before I just start grinding this away, I think I'll run that by Zenith and see what they say. So just to show you what I mean, this one here, if we put the other side in these, we'll just call them bolts that come down, the one side will fit perfect, but this side here, this notch that's, that's cut in here is about a quarter of an inch too far out. So like this whole slot needs to come about a quarter of an inch this way, which means I have to grind away all of this. All right, guys, that was yesterday that we tried to get the gear onto the airplane. And I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted to get the gear on so that I could get the airplane off the workbench and have access to the bottom of the airplane because I want to do things like mount the antennas and you know some of the avionics and the ELT and stuff like that. And I need access to the bottom of the airplane to do that. But before I start grinding away on this gear to make it fit, I do want to talk to Zenith first just to get their thoughts and their input and make sure it's okay to do that. So I'll move on from the gear today. I'll see what else I can work on. I do have an idea of some of the other things that I can get done while the airplane is still on the workbench. All right, so I do know that I do need to get the rudder pedals installed. And in order to get these installed, I need to get these powder coated. In order to get them powder coated, I need to drill these hinges because the hinges get mounted on here like this with the rudder pedals on here. This hinge has to be curved to fit the curve of this. So I've got four of these I can put on. I can drill the holes in here. Once I get these holes drilled, then I can send these off to the powder coater. All right, one of the things I think I'm going to do before I actually do mount the rudder pedals is get the engine mount uh, or the brackets for the engine mount drilled. And you can see this is a, a bracket here. This one goes up here in this corner here. And once I get the engine mount, that'll get opened up and drilled. And then there's a couple bolts that go in here. There's a bracket similar to this that goes on the bottom and uh, I can get those drilled. That'll probably be easier to do without the rudder pedals in the way. You can see that I do have the cabin frame clecoed in place. So I can put the, the aluminum panel on there and get it drilled. And then since I do have the, the template from Aircraft Specialty, I can kind of get that whole panel situation worked out and opened up and ready for the real panel. And I think I can also start working in the back here. I wouldn't mind getting this horizontal stabilizer on and set correctly and drilled. There's, a, there's gonna be a hole here and a hole here that mount the horizontal stabilizer. Once I do that without screwing it up, I can put the rest of these rivets in and I can probably work on maybe putting the rudder brackets on the top and the bottom of the aft fuselage. So there are a few things I can do um, without the airplane on the gear. So that's the plan for today. All right, everybody, this episode, I guess is getting long enough. I'll end it here. I'm going to get started today on probably the rudder pedals and those engine mounts and that will be the next video. Thanks for watching. Please make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up. For the two people that always hit the thumbs down, thanks, that helps too. We'll see you all in the next video.